signs of dating or being married to an insecure person? We'll start with the woman because ladies first. So, well, let's see. Hmm. We'll start with jealousy, first and foremost. One sign that you're dating an insecure person or woman or man is jealousy. For the woman, when it comes to jealousy, we can be pretty funny in that area. Oh, yeah. You know, we can be jealous about the dog, the cat, the (laughs) in-laws, the the parents, the children. (laughs) Because if if they don't feel like they're number one, they're sure not going to take number two. So jealousy is a is a big part of uh, recognizing if you're dating or married to an insecure person. Now, Jealous of the job, yeah. the, the car. The time the... you spend with the car, <laughs> the time you spend on the job. And the list goes on. On and on, <laughs> on, and on, and on, on, and on, <laughs> on to the break of dawn. But anyway, you know, some jealousy is, you know, it's, it's appropriate in its proper place. But when you start going overboard with it, when you start... Um, demanding more of your spouse's time, demanding more of your spouse's attention because, you know, they either, you know, do things on the weekend or they do things with the boys or they hang out with their friends. Uh, Jealousy, you really have to keep um, a a tab on that because it can turn into envy, anger, and also resentment. And then when those things start happening, you have a whole nother list of issues. So, one of the ways you can tell you're dating an insecure person or woman, since we're dealing with the woman first, jealousy. Now, for the man, uh, control freak. Y'all know what that is. He tells you where to go, tells you what to wear, tell you where you can't go, tell you what you can't do. You know, and, and, and starting off in the relationship, it, it's people say, you know, it's kind of cute. He ordered for me. <laughs> well, she's going to have this or she's going to have that. Yeah, it's cute starting off, but as you get deeper and deeper into the relationship, it starts getting annoying because you know what you want to eat sometimes, and because you've relinquished that control, uh, now that person has control over where you go, what you eat, when you order, and so on and so forth. And that's in small areas when it comes to the the ordering for you. When it gets really to that borderline uh, abusive is you're controlling who they can see. Mm -hmm. You can't spend time with your family. You can't spend time with your friends. You can't go out anywhere. You can't leave the house. So it can really get just dominating when they want to control your the every aspect of your life and you belong only to them. And then you got major issues. Yeah, that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Cuz a lot of pe- most people I know don't like to be controlled by nobody. And and sometimes it's even for God to control us. <laughs> it's even hard for God to control us. So for a natural human being to try to control someone else, it borders on um stupid. So that's why God gave us a free will. Yeah. He he allows us to make our own decision. He doesn't even try to control us. He allows you with your free will to make your own decision. So when a natural human being tries to control your every move, yeah, yeah we we do. We have issues with that. So that's one of the two things we discussed in uh, relationship matters last night again for those who are not a, a, able to attend, uh we just went over a couple of things that that kind of lets you know you're dealing with an insecure person. On the woman's part, it was jealousy. On the man's part, it was control free. Now, the second thing, we're going to go over probably about five points. We're not going to go over all of them because we had so many, but just give you a little taste of some of them from last night. So the second part of a woman's insecurity is what? She needs to know your exact whereabouts at all times. Dude, come on. (laughs) Every day, all the time. Where are you going? What Can you I doing? go? I don't no. <laughs> I don't want to be here by myself. Stay at home. I got friends other than you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, she needs to know where you are all the time. You going to the store? What you buying? Why? Are you hungry? How long are you going to be? <laughs> None of your business. I'll be back when I get back. <laughs> Controlling, again, it is controlling in a sense as well. But she needs to know your whereabouts at all times. And that's... Uh, you going to the bathroom? Yes, I am. Would you like to go? <laughs> no? Okay, well, don't ask me again. <laughs> it's right next door. No, uh, wanting to know where a person is, is not a bad thing. 
especially if you're in a relationship. It's just that accountability. It's that part of being uh, accountable to your spouse or to the person you're dating with. But wanting to know their every move, that's borderline insanity. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to keep up with a grown person whose responsibilities change every moment. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, can, you can be on your way home from work and text your spouse or call your spouse or call your friend or call the person you're dating and say, hey, I'm on my way home from work. And things change in an instant. Yeah. And if you don't have an opportunity to you know, immediately respond to them and tell them, hey, this is what happened or so on and so forth, or I had a U-turn or I got stuck by a train and they're blowing your phone up trying to figure out where you at. See, that can be taxing on the relationship. Mm -hmm. So what's the next thing? For, you want to say something else? No, on? we'll move on to the man. Move on to the mm -hmm. man. Because he has a <laughs> issues too when it comes to this area. Uh, and his is, just like the woman's number one, well, we're not actually numbering them, but the woman's number one was jealousy. So is the man. And for men... Uh, their jealousy tends to border on abuse when they can't control the person and then they get jealous of where they're going. You going to your mama's house again? You going to your sister's house again? I, I just want to go see how No, she you ain't going to see nobody because I'm trying to control you. And now I'm jealous of the fact that she's spending more time with her friends and her parents than, than me. That's a sign of insecurity. And that's a good, That's a we call them red flags. Yes. That's one of those red flags in a relationship where when that person tries to control you and then when you're not controllable, they try to dominate you and then when they can't dominate you, they get jealous of your activities. That's a red flag. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you're dating an insecure man. Watch out for those red fly flags. Yes. Do not ignore the red flags. They're red for a reason. Just like the stop signs and just like the red lights. They're red for a reason. Mm -hmm. You have to stop and, and pay close attention or proceed with caution yes. when you're dating an insecure person and you see those signs of jealousy popping up. Yes, yes, yes. So, number three, another sign of, for the woman, of an insecure woman. She looks through your phone, uh, checking every number that you call. Come on now. She goes through your internet search. See every site that you visited. That's a jealous woman, and that's a crazy woman. <laughs> <laughs> not just jealous, not just insecure. But if you if you see those red flags, you you you've either not proceeded with caution, or you just ignored the fact that that was a red flag, and you continued in a relationship. Right. But if you're in that relationship, there's ways to get out of it, and there's ways to talk to people to communicate. And that's why relationship matters is so important because we help deal with those type of issues. That's why Marriage Talk TV and other couples ministries are very important because they help couples deal with those type of issues. Mm -hmm. Because if you're dating someone who looks through your internet feed and searches your history and searches your phone while you sleep, uh, that's an issue on that person's part. And that's an insecurity that has to be dealt with. And I say, get a life. <laughs> get a life. Get two lives. Don't just get one. <laughs> hey, Kimberly. Thanks for joining. Hey, Mark. Get 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 more than get more than one life. You know, get a life with some friends. Get a, get a life with your family. Get a life with yourself. And you have to be secure in who you are when you go through those type of issues. Here's one thing we don't want to uh, misconstrue or get mixed up in the conversation. If that person has given you a reason for you to go through their phone, let's say, for instance, infidelity has taken place or the trust has been broken or things have happened in that relationship and, and you, you know, don't trust that person as much as you used to, now you have a right to demand accountability. And if that person doesn't, is not accountable to you in that area, then you have a right to let that person know, hey, I don't feel comfortable in this relationship because of the trust that was broken. So what I need to do now, I, I really need to look at the things that you're looking at. Because in order for this relationship to go further, I need to feel secure. And that's one way you can do that. And the, uh, as we discussed last night at Relationship Matters, uh, the key in build, rebuilding uh, that trust, a key of a, uh, an insecure person no longer being insecure is to rebuild the trust. Yes. And also communication. Communication is vital. 
when you've gone through those situations, as my husband was saying, communication helps to rebuild that trust. So you allow that indiv individual for a season because they need that uh, security to be able to go through your phone, to be able to, uh, when they don't feel comfortable of you going somewhere, mm -hmm. to be accountable as to where you're going, letting that person know uh, where you are at all times because you're re rebuilding that trust. And that's vital to do in those relationships where infidelity has taken place. Hey, Sandra, thanks for joining us. Because you, you, you really have to understand that hey, Sonia. when trust is broken, it, it takes time to rebuild. And especially on the man's part, that's where you have to let that control go. You have to let that jealousy go because if you're the one that's broken the trust, you're going to be the one to help rebuild it. So the accountability falls mostly on you. Now, vice versa, if the woman is the one that's broken the trust, the building of that trust, the bulk of it, of the accountability falls on you. And so you can't get mad and, and try to intimidate that person and say, well, you just trust me. Well, I don't trust you anymore in that area. Mm -hmm. So I need to feel secure in that area. So what I need to do is the way I feel secure is I need to know yes. where you are, where you're going, what you're doing. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're dealing with a person that's been through a traumatic situation in their relationship. Yeah, they may be insecure, but they may be insecure because of you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if they're insecure because of you, then you have a no, whole nother uh, rebuilding process to take on. Right. We're discussing uh, how you know you're dating or married to an insecure person and those red flags that, that yeah. come up. But that's what we're discussing now. But we're also letting you know that when you've been in that relationship and there is reason for mm -hmm. that trust to have been broken, you have to rebuild it. But just the red flag, when there's no reason none for you to be insecure. None. He goes to church. He's singing the choir. He comes home every day. He, he's faithfully uh, take care of his children. But somewhere in your past... Somewhere in past relationships. Somebody has hurt you. Somebody has abused you. But this individual nice. hasn't given you any reason to think that. But okay. you haven't you you're coming into the relationship with that baggage. And these are the red flags for the other your spouse or that the person, person you're that dating. you're dating yeah. to see those red flags and understand how they need to rebuild develop security in that person or either if you don't want to spend that kind of time and mm -hmm. if you're dating, if you don't want that kind of responsibility, get out. Yeah, bye. Depending on how deep the red flag is, if it's abusive control, get out. That's a red flag you don't no, ignore. No, no, no. And I don't know how many times we can say it, but that's a red flag you don't ignore. Because if that person will push you or hit you one time, they'll push you or hit you a second time. And if you ignore that red flag, all these other <laughs> red flags don't really even apply. Because you just just voided out the fact that that was a red flag and now you're in this relationship. So learn how to deal with the red flags first before you go even further into a, an abusive or insecure relationship. And you just happen to tune in to MarriageTalkTV.org with Danny and Amelia Cole talking about relationships, how to know you're dealing with an insecure person. We want to welcome you for joining us, first of all. And we've talked about a couple of red flags for the woman, jealousy for the man, jealousy for the woman. It was uh, she needs to know where you are all the At time. At all times. And for the man, he's a control freak. So we're going to the... And then another one for the woman, which was, she goes through your phone, goes reading through your phone. every phone number, or goes through your internet search, looking at every site that you visited. But she wait till you go to sleep first. Yeah. <laughs> And she makes you good and sleepy and you snoring. And then she picks the phone up and goes through your phone. That's really? an insecure woman. Really? Yeah. Get a life. Lock your phone <laughs> if you're dating an insecure woman. <laughs> Lock it up. And until she gets secure, don't give her the cold. No, just, just get it. You have to learn how to communicate no, no, those things. No, don't listen to that one. Yeah. <laughs> learn how to communicate those things. Learn how to talk those things out. And, and you can overcome those insecurities. The third thing. Number three for the man. Number three for the man. He has a hard time keeping eye contact. Now, you know when you're dealing with an insecure person, 
when they talking to you like this. <laughs> hey, how you doing? They can't look at you, you just say, in the eye. Quit the line. You quit the line. You, your eyes lie. Your eyes, because you can't see them. <laughs> and especially if he has on dark glasses all the time when he's talking to you. Don't don't <laughs> trust a person. Because we've heard the saying, the, window, uh, the eyes are the windows to the soul. You know, a lot of people don't want you looking into their soul because, you know, there's a lot of issues in there. But if you find a man or a woman, in this case, that's insecure... They have a very hard time doing this, talking to you, saying I love you, I appreciate you, I thank God for you. They have a hard time doing this. They do stuff like this. Uh, yeah, and you know uh, what so I was saying. where did you go to? I what? went to the store. I, I I called you. You didn't answer my, my phone. My, my phone was on. Uh, my phone was on mute, and so I wasn't able to call you. The eyes, the windows to the soul. If you're dealing with a person like that, that's an insecure person. Maybe not so much insecure in themselves, but insecure in the fact that they've just done something that was a red flag, and they don't want to come clean with it. So that's a good indication that you're dealing with an insecure man. He can't make eye contact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty good. So, <laughs> I, I never could lie to him. I would always laugh. Yeah, that's why I know she lying. <laughs> why are you laughing now? Well, <laughs> okay, moving right along. So today we're just discussing five of those signs of a insecure man or insecure woman. So we're going to go to number four. Number four for the woman. Ooh, guilt trips. Mm. And while she's going through these guilt trips, she's driving a wedge between your you, your friends, and your family. Why you spend so much time with your mama? Why you spend so much time with your friends? And that guilt trip is, well, I'm here all by myself. I don't want to be at home alone. Uh, can Get I go with you? a life. Get a life, if you want to make it shorter. But <laughs> pronounce it. Everybody say it with me. Get, Get a life. life. <laughs> That means your, you get your life, own life is not in that individual. Yes. Your life is not in uh, how they, where they go, what they do. Your life, become whole in you. Half a man, half a woman make half a relationship. You need to become whole within yourself before you can go dating a, a secure man. You need to learn how to uh, be secure in yourself and who mm -hmm. you are. And for us Christians, who you are in Christ. Nothing else matters when it comes to being focused on who you are in Christ. And when you become confident and secure in that, then you don't have to hold on so tight to this man. Because he's trying to scare him away because you get, you get too, you get my like space. The sands in your hand, the tighter you squeeze, the more they squeeze out of your reach. So you got to learn to give that person room to grow. You gotta learn to be secure in who they, who you are in Christ, and you gotta learn to be secure in who they are in Christ. Knowing, and even if they're not in Christ, so we're we're not just gonna put it being in Christ. That's a good start. But even if they're not saved or not in Christ, there are some things that you have to confidently trust in that individual, especially if they haven't given you any reason to think. That they're going to do anything outside of their relationship. They're committed to it. They love it. They're dedicated to it. You've got to learn how to be confident in who you are and know that that person is not going to do anything that's going to disrupt that relationship. Because our bishop talked uh, a couple of months ago. We, we put some videos out on uh, marriagetalktv.org and he talked about um, unfaithful behavior is a sign of an affair. It's not just sex. It's not just, you know, dating someone else. It's unfaithful behavior. Anything that you couldn't do with your spouse, anything that you couldn't do while that spouse or that person you're dating is there, is something you shouldn't do when they're not there. So that's unfaithful behavior. But if that person hadn't given you any inkling or any reason to think that they're going to do something unfaithful when you're not around, don't put the guilt trip on them. Don't keep asking them, where are you going? Uh, your mama called again. Your, your, your sister wants you to come over. And what about me? What about me? What about me? What about you? How come you don't have more friends? How come you're not doing anything? How come you're not going out, spending time with other people? 
Is it because your spouse, the man, or the person you're dating is controlling? Hmm. Red flag you should have looked at. Or is it that person is jealous? Hmm. Another red flag you should have looked at. So with that being said, don't try to guilt trip a person. Man or woman. Mm -hmm. Because men are good at that too. You know, why, why are you going with your girlfriends? Yeah, I'm here by myself. Well, go cut the grass. You know, do something. <laughs> You know, paint the house. Do some of the things I've asked you to do, uh, you know, a couple of months ago <laughs> if you ain't got nothing else to do. But learn how to enjoy yourselves and learn how to enjoy your own life and be secure in who you are. Now, for the man, and, number four. Go ahead, babe. And you guys know with the social media technology, I forgot to announce to our Instagram and Facebook followers that we were live. So I just did that. So excuse me for pulling away for a second to make sure I announce, uh, announce that to let everyone know that they can see our video live. If you missed Relationship Matters on last night, we're doing a recap of how you know when you're dating an insecure man or woman. Dating how you know or married. when you're married to an insecure man or woman. So in the recap, we're only doing five uh, signs for the man and five for the woman. So right now, we are on number four for the man of how you know you're dating or married to an insecure woman. Oh, I'm sorry, an insecure man. So this is for the man. People pleaser. Uh, an insecure, uh, secure man understands that saying no doesn't mean or doesn't make him a bad person. An insecure man is always a person that's trying to please people. I, I, I got a, I got a, a FYI or a bullet or something, some news for you. You are not <laughs> going to be able to please people ever. <laughs> You're not going to be able to please people because people sometimes are so fickle that you can change for one person and it'll affect the way the other person looks at you. Or you can change for your spouse and it'll affect the way your mom looks at you. You can change for your mom, it'll affect, it'll, it'll affect the way your wife looks at you. So you got to learn how to please God, number one, mm -hmm. and not be so concerned about pleasing people. But an insecure man will try to please people all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you try to please everybody all the time, you don't please nobody. And one of the areas where uh, the man would try, an uh, insecure man, would try to please mama and wife. And mm -hmm. you know that uh, mama, uh, come on now. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's mom. But you, when you leave and cleave, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be continuing to try to please mama. You need to be pleasing your wife now. Hello. And you can bring cause much division when it comes to, well, Mama said this, or mama, I got to go to mama house. I got to give mama money for my check every month, and wife don't know anything about it. You're trying to please everybody, and that's an insecure man. And the wife is singing in her head that LL Cool J song, Mama said knock you out. <laughs> so you don't want to try to please two people at one time. You want to try to make sure that you're pleasing God and if you're pleasing God, God's going to make sure that the people that are involved in your life are pleased. So mm -hmm. learn how not to be a people pleaser. And that mama thing, when you leave and cleave, mm -hmm. mama can't give you what wifey can give you. So, uh, Rob. If she yeah. can, there's something wrong. Major wrong. Major okay. wrong. <laughs> and mama can make you feel like wife. Okay, so that that's sickening. I don't even want to <laughs> think like that. Let's move on. The whole next issue. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Number five for the woman. She's clingy. Uh, and wants you to abandon all your friends. Because nah. she's abandoned all hers just to be with you everywhere you go. Your every move. You can't even go to the bathroom by yourself. She wants to be right there by your side. So this is how you look on Bill Street. The woman is smiling like that. The man like this. Ugh. Ugh. I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go Just home. Just my boo. Just my Bye. boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's really saying in his head. Boo. I don't want to be here. Why do I have to go to a baby shower? <laughs> you know, it is co-ed. It's co-nothing. <laughs> oh, baby, come on. I don't want to go to no baby shower. I don't want to go to no wedding. I don't want to go to no bridal shower. <laughs> I want to stay home and do nothing. 
But she's so clingy that she'll put that guilt trip on you and try to make you feel. This is one thing my wife and I did a long time ago, and I love her for it. Um, we were in those type of relationships in the beginning because, number one, when you get into a marriage or relationship, you, you, you just be honest with yourself and everybody knows that you struggle for that control. Mm -hmm. You're going to struggle for who's going to be in control of the relationship, who's going to do this, who's going to do that. Basically, who's going to wear the pants and make the decisions. Right. But you have to get to a point where you balance one another out. You're not competing for control. You're competing to control the relationship as a whole, as a couple. So we got to this point where my wife would say, you know what, just if you don't want to go somewhere with me, just tell me you don't want to go and you don't have to go. And so that liberated me a whole lot because there were times when I didn't want to go and I went anyway and she was miserable. Miserable. Because I made, I let her know I didn't oh, want to be there. Please. I don't want to be here. You can go smile home. all you want to. That's why we have two cars. Yes. That's why she can go wherever she want to go. She'll ask me if I want to go, and I say no. She'll be like, okay, I'll see you when I get back. Or I'll ask her if she wants to go. She'll say no. Okay, I'll see you when I get back. So basically, you have to get to that point where you're not so clinging. Because that Hollywood mentality, mm. that 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 television, no, you don't. That's why the d divorce rate is so great in Hollywood now. You don't always <laughs> have to do everything together. Because all you see is just a front. All you see is the version they want you to see. That you got to always be together and hugged up for the cameras. And, oh. and we're in Memphis. And it was 88 degrees this morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Don't touch me this early in the morning and it's this hot. <laughs> it's the same thing when you're in a relationship. You've got to give that person room. Mm -hmm. you got to give them room to grow. you got to give them room to expand. you got to give them room to be themselves. And you don't always have to do everything with that person. You've got to learn how to let that person be that person. Because if you don't, you know what a clingy person does? It smothers you. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you get, so, you get so uncomfortable that you start pushing that person out the way. Mm -hmm. You start moving that person. You start doing things to irritate that person to make them not want to be with you. And that's not a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Just like those grains of sand. Mm -hmm. That's always the example that comes through my mind. The tighter you squeeze, the more you lose. Right. So learn how to give that person room to grow. Okay. So the fifth thing for the man. The last one for the man. And we will be wrapping it up. He's very defensive. He's very defensive. He's unable to take constructive criticism. And when I say constructive criticism from your spouse or from the person you're dating, that means they're trying to share some information with you that's going to make you better. Not bitter, but better. They're going to share information with you like that tie doesn't match that shirt or that shirt doesn't go with that jacket or your <laughs> shoes or your socks are mismatched or something or do something to make you look better or feel better. And a insecure man can't take that because they take it personal. Like, what do you mean? I can't dress? No, I'm saying you look like a clown. <laughs> Because, you know, she's not saying that, but in her mind, you, you look like a clown with those clothes on. And I'm trying to help you not look like a clown because that tie don't go with that jacket. So you can either take this constructive criticism or you can go by yourself because <laughs> I'm not going to be seen with a clown. No, but the thing is, being an uh, insecure man is, is difficult when it comes to a person sharing with you criticism. Right. constructive criticism. You've got to learn how to be able to take it from your spouse. You've got to be able to take it from the person you're in a relationship with. Because you think about it, if you get any kind of, um, what do you call those things on your job when you get evaluated? Mm -hmm. You get evaluated, they're, they're not all good. But you do those things and your manager evaluates you, you try to correct those things so you can either get a promotion or a raise. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in a relationship. When That's your good. spouse good, is sweetie. trying to give you constructive criticism, mm -hmm. they're giving it to you because they want you to be better. They want you to raise up. They want your standards to come up a little higher. But an insecure man takes those type of constructive criticism, he takes it personal. Mm -hmm. 
and they're not always personal. Now, there are times when, you know, you've been in an argument or something like that, and they say things that's personal, and, you know, that's a whole nother relationship matters that we've talked about. But you've got to learn how to take constructive, constructive criticism and grow from it because they're not trying to hurt your feelings. They're trying to make you better. Hi, Kari. Hi, Kenny. Thanks for joining. So today we have done a summary from our Relationship Matters meeting last night where we discussed help. <laughs> help. Y'all better help her. Y'all better help her because she's doing what? She's married or dating an insecure man. So we're talking about that. Help, I'm dating or married to an insecure man. So today we summed up only five signs for the man and five signs for the woman. Uh, last night at Relationship Matters, there was a great example that was that we used, uh, which I really, really loved, and that was the riding on the scooter. We had a couple to come up. Uh, <laughs> First, the Mr. and Mrs. Spin Doctor Levon and his wife. <laughs> Scooter riders. Bad Pros. example. I was like, oh, I don't know why you got them. They're going to ride this thing. They rode the scooters all over the place. <laughs> they were very confident and secure. <laughs> they were the examples of confident and secure in who they were, on who those they scooters. are on those scooters. And then we so. brought up uh, Alex and Tina Moore. We call them half paints. <laughs> But they're our, uh, one of our assistants, a set of assistants for our Relationship Matters for Aquila and Priscilla Marriage Ministry. And Alex was helping Tina ride the scooter. Mm -hmm. So Tina had to be secure in Alex and allowing him to encourage her, to uh, let her know that she could do better, that she got this, that, um, you know, she had on heels at first right. and she was very uncomfortable, but she was trusting in her spouse and her spouse was very encouraging mm -hmm. in, in how he was helping her or assisting her on the scooter. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it was very rocky. She got a little, very uncomfortable. She Insecure. got a little, little more secure, just a little. And then at the end of the session, we called them back up and said, now, let's do this again. Whatever you need to do to feel comfortable. She took her shoes off. She got on that scooter and her husband pushed her around mm -hmm. and she became more comfortable. But it took that time to allow your spouse to encourage you and it took the spouse being able to, to take that time to pour into their, their, the one that they're dating or their spouse mm -hmm. in order to build up their confidence and security. So regardless of the past relationships, the insecurity that she went through with family, friends, or other relationships, letting her know that this relationship wouldn't be like those, right. but that I'm there to help you. And so that was a great example, I thought, and I believe that the couples really took something home from that session. Every month we do our Relationship Matters uh, for all adults, single, married, family, friends, co-workers, because all relationships do matter. But for the retreats that we try to do quarterly or at least once a year, we get out of Memphis or out of uh, our normal location there for the married couples who have such a great responsibility, much mm -hmm. more than dating when it comes to marriage and family. So we want to get them, allow them to spend that quality time together. So either join us or sow seed to support another couple. Contact us. Check our website out. We have sponsorship uh, opportunities on our website, website dannyamelia.org. Send us through uh, a seed through PayPal. Our PayPal account is marriagetalk at gmail.com. So please contact us regarding those uh, sponsorship opportunities or joining us for the retreat. Relationship Matters was awesome last night. Thank you guys for joining us. We had a wonderful time. And for those who were not able to come out on last night, we're here for you today. And we are so thankful that you guys joined us today from our Marriage Talk studios here in the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee. 
This is Danny and Amelia Cole from Marriage Talk TV, letting you know that all relationships do matter. And we want to send a shout out to our friends who are going to be helping us in Rome, Georgia with this marriage retreat, Mark and Annette Clark of Love Alive Ministry.